should be anchored in a bedrock foundation of moral and ethical principles. So let us begin this lesson by defining what morality is. What is morality? It's defined by one textbook author. Morality refers to the quality of human acts by which we call them right or wrong, good or evil. Your human action is right when it conforms with the norm, rule, or law of morality. Otherwise, it is said to be wrong, for instance, when Juan gets the pencil of Pedro without the latter's permission, Juan's action is wrong because it is contrary to the norm and is stealing is wrong. A man's action, habit, or character is good when it is not lacking of what is normal to man and when it is accordance with man's nature. For instance, it is not normal for man to behave like a beast because he is not a beast, he is a man. And unlike the beast, he has intellect and free will. That intellect makes him capable of thinking, judging, and reasoning. His free will gives him the ability to choose. Unlike the beast, he is not bound by instincts. It is a natural occurrence for a beast when a male dog meets a female dog on the street and mate right there. And then as they are not free, but bound by their instinct, like sexual instinct. But it is contrary to man's nature when a man and a woman do as the dogs do. To do so is to go down to the level of the beast. So let's proceed now with the meaning of foundational moral principles. What is meant by foundational moral principles? The word principle comes from the Latin word princeps, which means a beginning or a source. A principle is that on which something is based, founded, originated, or initiated. It is likened to the foundation of a building upon which all other parts stand. If we speak of light, the principle is the sun the body from which the light of this world originates. A foundational moral principle is, therefore, the universal norm upon which all other principles on the rightness or wrongness of an action are based. It is the source of morality. Where is this foundational moral principle? It is contained in the natural law. Many moralists, authors, and philosophers to this foundational moral principle in different terms. But it may be acceptable to all believers and non-believers alike to refer to it as natural law. So what is the natural law? It is the law written in the hearts of men. For theists, it is a man's share in the eternal law of God. St. Thomas defined it as the light of natural reason, whereby we discern what is good and what is evil. It is the law that says, do good and avoid evil. This is the fundamental or foundational moral principle. All men and women, regardless of race and belief, have a sense of this foundational moral principle. It is ingrained in man's nature. It is built into the design of human nature and woven into the fabric of the normal human mind. We are inclined to do what we recognize as good and avoid that which we recognize as evil. The natural law that says do good and avoid evil comes in different versions. Confucius said the same when he thought, Do not do to others what you do not like others to do to you. This is also the form of the golden rule of Christianity, only that it is written in the positive form to others what you like others do to you. Immanuel Kant's version is, act in a such a way that your maxim can be the maxim for all. So for Christians, this golden rule is made more explicit through the Ten Commandments and the Eight Beatitudes. These are summed up in the two great commandments, love God with all your heart, with all your mind, with all your strength, and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Take this through the Eightfold Path. For the Buddhists, they do good when they first strive to know the truth, or right view, resolve to 
Mrs. Tibby or right intention. Say nothing to hurt others or right speech. Respect life, morality, and property. Right action. Engage in a job that does not injure others. Right livelihood. Strive to free their mind of evil. Right effort. Control their feelings and thoughts. Right mindfulness. Last one, practice proper forms of concentration or also known as right concentration. Buddha thought that hatred does not cease by hatred. Hatred ceases only by love. The Islamic Quran forbids lying, stealing, adultery, and murder. It also teaches honor for parents, kindness to slaves, protections for the orphan, and the widowed, and charity to the poor. It teaches the virtues of faith in God, patience, kindness, honesty, industry, honor, courage, and generosity. It condemns mistrust, impatience, and cruelty. Furthermore, the Muslims abide by the five pillars of Islam. We have prayer, self-purification by fasting, fasting, almsgiving, and pilgrimage to Mecca for those who can afford. Teachers is a person of good moral character. As laid down in the preamble of our code of ethics of professional teachers, Teachers are duly licensed professionals who possess dignity and reputation with high moral values as well as technical and professional competence. In the practice of their profession, they strictly adhere to, observe, and practice a set of ethical and moral principles, standards, and values. So from the above preamble or from the said preamble, the words moral values are mentioned twice to accentuate on the good moral character expected of you. The teacher. So when are you of good moral character? One Christian author describes four ways of describing good moral character. First one is being fully human. You have realized substantially your potential as a human person. Second, being a loving person. You are caring in a selfish and mature manner with yourself, other people, and God. Being a virtuous person, you have acquired good habits and attitudes and you practice them consistently in your daily life. And the last one, being a morally mature person, you have reached a level of development emotionally, socially, mentally, spiritually appropriate to your developmental stage. In short, you are on the right track when you strive to develop your potential. You love and care for yourself and make this love flow to others. You lead a virtuous life. And as you advance in age, you also advance in your emotional, social, intellectual, and spiritual life. The foundational moral principle is do good and avoid evil. This is contained in the natural law. The natural law is engraved in the heart of every man and woman. We have in us the sense to do the good that we ought to do and to avoid the evil that we ought to avoid. This foundational moral principle, doing good and avoiding evil, is expressed in many other ways by different people. The famous Chinese philosopher, Confucius, taught the same principle when he said, Do not do to others what you do not like others to do to you. Immanuel Kant taught the same, Act in such a way that your role can be principle of all. The Buddhists abide by the same moral principle in their Eightfold Path. The Muslims have this foundational moral principle laid down in the Quran and the Five Pillars. For the Christians, the Bible shows the way to do good life or to have a good life is the Ten Commandments and the Eight Beatitudes. The Ten Commandments and the Eight Beatitudes are summarized in the Two Great Commandments of Love for God and Love for Neighbor. Our act is moral when it is accordant with our human nature. Our act is immoral when it is contrary to our human nature. Our intellect and free will will make us different from above the beast. As a teacher, you are expected to be a person of good moral character. You are a person of good moral character when you are human, loving, virtuous, and mature. 
So that's all for today. I hope you learned something from our topic. Thank you and God bless everyone.